Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather on the 7th day of November 2021. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, hosting today's show. Uh, first graphic here, actually, this is the first graphic. Second graphic uh, shows a webcam shot, FAA webcam shot of Talkeetna, light snow falling all day long up there in the uh, valley, kind of a snowy day in the portions of the Susitna Valley, <clears throat> and uh, picked up about an inch of snow or so. Uh, even a little more over at ha down to the south of Hatcher Pass had one and a half inches of snow in the last 24 hours. And uh, going from there, taking a look, uh, let's see, farther to the north, we'll see that uh, Arctic Village, clear skies, uh, much colder temperatures there, uh, definitely than what Talkeetna has, but uh, clear skies and, uh, of course, snow cover. Still getting some low angle sun up at Arctic Village, at least for a short time during the day, uh, but they're being north of the Arctic Village, they'll probably lose that, I believe, here later this month. <clears throat> and the next shot here, warnings, watches, advisories there are none out anywhere around the state today uh, out west uh, got a system out over the Aleutians but just some minimum gale force wind so you that front and nothing really heavy either precipitation or wind wise expected with that uh, system at all for the next couple of days and satellite imagery <clears throat> showing uh, clouds uh, still rotating in but actually coming from uh, east to west across the pan and a little pressure south of the area there over the Queen Charlotte or west of the Queen Charlotte circulation there so showers really tapering off there drying out with some clearing still some clouds around but showers pretty minimal now and uh, even some clouds over the interior again a quite an area of light snow falling today uh, Fairbanks had light snow throughout the day. Nanana, that area, the greater Fairbanks area, picking up about an inch or so, maybe one, two, maybe a little more, some a little less. Koyukuk Valley, Bettles had uh, two inches of snow there, that cloud area. And then off to the east, uh, north of Northway there, Chicken, three inches of snow. That was one of the heavier amounts that I could find today. Uh, Alieska, farther to the south there, uh, picked up two inches of snow. That was, I believe, at the base of the uh, observing site there at Alieska. So a little new snow there uh, for the ski area. <clears throat> Otherwise dry out to the west for the most part. Areas of light snow in the lower top clouds. Uh, not a whole lot, pretty light. That's really dropped off over the, still some clouds left over the Perbolofs portion of the Eastern Bering Sea. Just some flurries or light rain and snow showers or light snow showers. Pretty light with diminishing wind, still gusting 35 miles an hour Alaska Peninsula. Those are coming down today and then that system out to the west over ADAC or actually the low pressure center west of ADAC in the front near ADAC brought out only a quarter of an inch of rain with gusts of 40 miles an hour so not a particularly strong system pretty mediocre for out in the Aleutians in the month of November otherwise to the east of that high pressure ridging uh, from the Fox Islands pretty nice day there light winds up into the uh, northern Bering Sea and then into the northern interior trapped under it, a little bit of low clouds and uh, flurries, possible fog there over the north slope uh, <clears throat> in toward uh, Anatovic. Getting north winds through the passes of the uh, Brooks Ranger, enough of a gradient, for example, Howard passing gusts 45 miles an hour out of the north, temperature 13 degrees, definitely wind chill below zero there. Anatovic uh, passing gusts to about 20, 25 miles an hour there. Otherwise, lighter winds around the area, gusts up to 25, though it's Seward with clear skies. Uh, so clearing out, uh, decreasing moisture across uh, southern Alaska today. And the panhandle system to the south spread, uh, that actually that low center rotates back to the west and that'll kind of nudge that front northward and push some rain into the southern southeast coast tonight, possibly making it as far north as a line, say from uh, 
Petersburg to Sitka. To the south of there, best chance of rain. To the north, nothing at all, mostly clear. Lynn Canal Glacier Bay. And we're looking at increasing northerly winds uh, for the northern inside waters of the Panhandle over the next couple of days. In fact, gale warnings out for uh, <clears throat> Tuesday for Lynn Canal for north winds sustained at 35 knots. So that high up over the, uh, let's see, Mackenzie Delta. Kenzie River Delta area starts to tighten the gradient up uh, across uh, the Yukon. Otherwise, uh, for tonight, high pressure out over the Bering Sea, trapped under the ridge axis, some low clouds, light flurries, fog, that sort of thing, and the front stays put out there over the central Aleutians and then tends to wash out. The low center moves over Adak and Atka, so definitely a lighter wind day tomorrow, but still periods of rain, fog, IFR conditions, unsettled back to Shimianat too, even the Commodorskis. And uh, eastern Bering Sea looking pretty good. Light winds and variably cloudy skies. Maybe some clearing. Fox Islands, Alaska Peninsula, best, better chance of clearing over Bristol Bay to Kodiak Island. Southern Alaska looking really nice. Uh, mostly clear skies, maybe some clouds uh, south or in the interior there with a few flurries possible. It won't be completely cloud free over interior Alaska. Same thing for the north slope out to the Arctic coast. Some low clouds fog there. And then that system uh, really hammering the Queen Charlotte Islands in advance of that front. And some of that will sneak up across Dixon Entrance, maybe catching Prince of Wales Island with a little bit of rain tomorrow. And the increase in the winds as well, uh, turbulence on the increase there uh, also. <clears throat> and Tuesday's outlook, low pressure just west of the Queen Charlotte Islands. And enough moisture gets uh, pushed back to the north there, interacts with that Arctic boundary for chance of rain and snow over the northern pan. It'll depend on, as I say, your elevation time of day and, of course, your temperature uh, with uh, periods of rain farther to the south. But the heaviest wind and rain will be south of the area there, south of Dixon Entrance in toward uh, the coast of British Columbia. But uh, close enough for uh, fact, so look for kind of a return to uh, cloudier and uh, wetter conditions, but nothing too heavy for the southeast coast, interior Alaska. Uh, clear and about seasonably cool for this time of the year, below zero at night and in the teens and 20s for the high, single numbers uh, farther to the north. Kodiak Island, variably cloudy, light winds, risk of a snow shower, rain or snow shower, Togiak Bay. And finally, the rain pushes eastward there with that low center tracking into the Fox Islands with a front, spreading rain to uh, possibly as far east as King Cove, maybe Cold Bay. And that's about it on that. But it uh, looked tighter gradient back to the west there, north to northeast winds on the increase, possibly to gale, well, two gale force levels for the far western Aleutians. And again, flurries, fog, low clouds possible at times for the Arctic coast, north slope areas. And from there, moving on to the five-day forecast, Anchorage, uh, Monday, not uh, sunny. Highs, upper 20s, lows uh, 10 to 15 or 5 to 15, quite a range. Of course, overnight lows across the Anchorage area. Probably Tuesday looking at to be the coolest day out of the next five. Uh, not much different from tomorrow, though, but uh, highs in the mid-20s, lows 10, 5 to 15. And then chance of uh, snow, a little bit of an increase in the clouds come back in Wednesday and Thursday, and then maybe back to clear skies possibly on Friday. Highs, though, staying in the 20s with lows in the teens. And lows uh, t or for tomorrow morning, below zero there, Arctic vil Village, minus 12, minus 2 Fort Yukon, Chuck Yitzik, uh, those areas near zero for Eagle, all the way down to Northway and Toke. Single numbers, much of the central interior. Otherwise, the southeast coast, uh, upper 20s to uh, upper 30s, coldest in the north, and near freezing for Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay. Lows 5 to 15, 25 to 30 for the Alaska Peninsula, lower 30s for the Fox Islands, upper 20s for the Pribilofs, and uh, 35 to 40 for the central western Aleutians under that wind and cloud condition and rain. And then the highs tomorrow, teens along the Arctic coast, uh, 5 to 10 for the North Slope and the Brooks Range, mid-teens for the central interior, Lower 20s, Seward Peninsula, upper 20s, St. Lawrence Island, mid 30s for the Pribilofs, and in the 40s for the central western Aleutians, near 40 for the Fox Islands, lower to mid 30s for the Alaska Peninsula, near 40 Kodiak Island, and 35 to 45 for the southeast coast, mid teens for the highs for the Copper River Basin, and 25 to 35 south central Alaska. And then the lows Tuesday morning, a little more widespread area, below zero conditions there. Uh, 5 to 15 below 
eastern and northeast interior and single numbers all the way down almost to the coastline, southwest coast, single numbers into Bristol Bay and uh, 5 to 15 south central Alaska, 5 to 10 below for the Copper River Basin, upper 20s to upper 30s for the Panhandle, and Kodiak should fall down into at least the uh, upper 20s. And then the highs for Tuesday afternoon, single number is a little above zero for the Brooks Range North Slope. Some areas may stay below zero, but uh, definitely chillier. Single numbers to or five to ten for the areas north of the Alaska Range, five to or ten to fifteen west of the Alaska Range. Otherwise, in the twenties, twenty to twenty-five South Central Alaska near freezing for Homer, and uh, lower thirties Northern Panhandle, mid forties down to the south. Upper 30s Kodiak Island, mid to upper 30s for the Alaska Peninsula, lower 40s for the Aleutians, and mid 30s for the Perbolofs. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic Monday morning, IFR, Arctic Coast North Slope, but VFR over toward, uh, well, east of Dead Horse to Kaktovik Barter Island. And some VFR in the interior, especially out to the west coast, eastern Bering Sea, all VFR, even the Bering Strait, south to the Fox Islands, Alaska Peninsula. A uh, big area of IFR with that uh, slow moving system over the southwest Bering, and that extending from Atka westward to Shimianat too. Kodiak Island, uh, the Aleutian Range, northeast Bristol Bay or eastern Bristol Bay, all marginal, catching the Port Muller area, maybe Seldovia, but uh, south central Alaska, VFR and some marginal VFR along the Alaska Range and interior valleys, even IFR in the low valleys, Copper River Basin, or the higher valleys, Copper River Basin, for Yukon area, or the Yukon Flats. Panhandle VFR. And then for the southeast coast, marginal VFR starts creeping into uh, Dixon Entrance with that next system down to the south and Prince of Wales Island area. And possibly a little more extensive than what this shows, but right now this should cover it pretty well. IFR out over the central Bering Sea, Adak Atka, marginal for the Perbolos, area marginal VFR now showing up through the Bering Strait with some IFR around Shishmaref, and then marginal VFR, western central Arctic coast, western north slope, VFR interior Alaska, except maybe the Cuscombe Valley. And for Tuesday morning, VFR, much interior Alaska, north Gulf Coast, Kodiak Island, uh, Panhandle, still uh, marginal VFR, Dixon Entrance, and maybe into southern Prince of Wales Island, Heidelberg. And for the uh, Aleutians, IFR now spreads into the Fox Islands, extends back to ADAC just north of the western Aleutians, and some IFR along the southwest coast covering Nunavak Island, and marginal for the western Arctic coast. Tuesday afternoon, IFR, central north slope, eastern Arctic coast, south of the Brooks Range, VFR, all the way down to uh, south central Alaska. Got some marginal VFR maybe making its way into western Cook Inlet, southern Cuscombe Valley, western Alaska Range, Bristol Bay, all of the Aleutians, Bering Sea, possibly marginal in areas at times, Kodiak Island, possibly marginal, Panhandle, VFR, except down across Prince of Wales Island, a little lower conditions there. And for passes, Anatovic, VFR, Adigan, VFR, Lake Clark and Merrill, VFR, Rainy, VFR, Windy, VFR, and Isabel, VFR, and Mintasta, VFR, Tanita, VFR, and Portage, VFR, kind of in a chant here, uh, Chilkoot and White, good VFR, either approach, looking good Monday and probably into Tuesday as well. For the freezing levels near St. Lawrence, St. Matthew Island, otherwise two to 4,000 feet there with the uh, southeast flow ahead of that, uh, associated with that system out there. Otherwise at the surface, east of Kodiak Island, south of Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula, south of the North Gulf Coast, and then right across Prince of Wales Island. Icing, increasing icing potential, extreme southern southeast coast uh, throughout the day tomorrow. Uh, other than that, no icing over interior Alaska, and then you got to go way out west there, Adak and Atka, could see some isolated moderate rime icing with that uh, very slow moving frontal system, but that'll shift eastward on Tuesday to uh, Unmak and Unalaska Islands. And from there, taking a look at the jet stream, high pressure uh, chucked CC into the Beaufort Sea, so northeast flow aloft uh, here up to 65 knots in the northeast interior turns easterly 50 knots there across the Seward Peninsula and then coming around that uh, low over the Yukon Delta we've got north 50 knots turn northwest 60 knots and pick up to 70 knots along and south of the Alaska Peninsula westerlies 
west-southwest 50 knots into the panhandle. And at 9,000 feet, uh, east-northeast 20 to 45 knots strongest there from the Koyukuk Valley up to the eastern north slope. And 30 knot easterlies, small band there just uh, north-northwest or south of St. Lawrence Island. Otherwise, uh, increasing southeast winds over the Queen Charlotte's uh, about 30 knots along the south coast of the Panhandle. 3,000 feet, big winds there staying down around the Queen Charlotte's, but you're close enough there, Prince of Wales Island, Dixon entrance to feel the effect tomorrow afternoon. And easterly is 25 to 40 knots uh, through the north central interior there from the Yukon Flats out toward uh, the Seward Peninsula. 20 knots along the Arctic coast, south to southeast, 45 knots edging their way eastward toward Unmac Island, but staying west of the Pervolos. And northwest 50 knots for Shimmy and Attu results in moderate chop there for uh, much of the Aleutians, uh, central western Aleutians, and then a swath of moderate chop below 5,000 feet central interior and severe over the Queen Charlottes. We try to provide everyone with the best forecast we can for snow, sleet, and ice in the winter with as much notice as we can. And we've made great strides in our forecasting over the years. However, given the complexity in winter weather forecasting, the first forecast simply won't be as good as the one closer to the event. As the event nears, our forecast will become more precise. Forecasts are updated constantly from days before the event until the precipitation actually begins. If you want the most accurate and up-to-date information, you have to check the forecast frequently. It's very unlikely that any computer model snow amount forecast, especially days in advance, will be exactly right. Sometimes it's even difficult to forecast amounts the day of the event. Don't focus so much on exact numbers. Our forecast offices produce a range of possibilities available on each office's winter page. Impacts from winter storms can vary a lot across even short distances, especially true in the terrain of the mountains, but even in areas with more subtle differences in elevation. Just because it's not bad where you are doesn't mean that it isn't bad just a short distance away. There's often a small area, perhaps not bigger than a couple of counties, of heavy snow embedded within the larger area of precipitation. It is very difficult to pinpoint exactly where this area will occur in advance, that is why we give ranges and probabilities, and that is what we mean when we say isolated higher amount. Not all storms are the same. Some storms affect different areas in different ways, and even weaker storms can produce big impacts. The Winter Storm Severity Index is a product that uses threat levels to depict overall anticipated impacts to society due to winter weather. You can be a citizen scientist. You can report the weather that is occurring at your location any time of day. Local National Weather Service forecast offices offer Skywarn Storm Spotter training, so you can become an official Skywarn Storm Spotter. The MPing app and website allows you to submit your report online. And for the most dedicated, you can join COCORAS, where you can submit your daily precipitation report directly to the National Weather Service. Your ground truth helps us improve forecasts. Did you know that a one to two degree temperature difference either at the surface or just a few hundred feet off the ground can make a big difference in whether we get rain, freezing rain, sleet, or snow? That's really hard to forecast when we don't have a lot of data, but thankfully we do have 92 upper air stations that release weather balloons at least twice a day. Even if you live in warmer climates, it's important to know your winter precipitation types when traveling. Freezing rain is liquid rain that freezes when it hits the ground, creating a coat of ice on roads, walkways, trees, and power lines. Sleet is rain that freezes into ice pellets before reaching the ground. Snow squalls are quick, intense bursts of heavy snow that are accompanied by gusty winds. They rapidly reduce visibility and can create treacherous travel. Snow squall warnings are issued for localized areas where snow squalls are expected in the next 30 to 60 minutes. As of December 2019, they are now sent as one of the wireless emergency alerts. 
Know the differences between watches, warnings, and advisories. A winter storm warning means that confidence is high that a winter storm will produce heavy wintry precipitation and cause significant impacts. A winter storm watch means that confidence is medium and that a winter storm producing significant impacts is possible. A winter weather advisory means to exercise caution as light amounts of wintry precipitation will cause slick conditions and may impact travel. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at uh, sea ice analysis, uh, November 2nd, you see some thinner ice still north of Point Barrow and uh, an area of uh, ice extending in from the Russian coast there in toward the northwest coast. Going to uh, here today, the 7th, uh, we'll see that uh, area thin ice uh, Still north of Point Barrow, not to the extent it was, but uh, the area down here, almost up to the uh, northwest coast here, just southwest of Point Hope, West Kivalina there. So it's really almost closed off now. And even so, almost across the Bering Strait as well. And the trend probably gonna continue for the next several days, as well as Norton Sound continuing to see an increase in sea ice, as well as Kotzebue Sound. Coastal water forecasts here for the Panhandle. <coughs> Small craft advisories for the south coast, southeast winds, 25 knots, seas 10 feet. North coast, uh, east-northeast, 15 to 25 knots. Lincoln Glacier Bay, northern inner channels, north of 25. North 20 for Stevens Passage with gale force gusts of 35 knots. You probably apply that to Lynn Canal as well with gale force gusts, such as Eldred Rock, for example. And northeast of 20 for the uh, Clarence Strait area. And then going to the outlook for Tuesday, we've got uh, gale warnings now, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay tightening gradient and uh, increasing winds as a result, uh, 35 knots from the north, gale warnings there, and 30 knots from the north for Stevens Passage, Clarence Strait north of 20, small craft advisories along the coast, northeast winds 25 knots, seas uh, running 9 to 16 feet. Cook Inlet, north winds, 10 to 15 knots, 2 to 3 foot seas, Prince Liam Sound, north at 15, and variable winds, 10 to 15 knots for the North Gulf Coast, Barren Islands, Kamishak Bay, northwest winds at 20. And uh, fairly light wind pattern continues through Tuesday, Cook Inlet, north to northeast, 10 to 15 knots, variable at 10 knots for Kamishak Bay, and uh, west or the uh, Barren Islands, North Gulf Coast, looking at west-northwest winds, 20 knots. Prince William Sound, north winds at 10 knots. <clears throat> Kodiak Island, north winds, 15 to 20 knots. Bristol Bay, north winds, 15 knots. And the Alaska Peninsula, north to northwest breeze at 15. Outlook for Tuesday, not too bad on uh, either day, Monday and Tuesday. West winds, 15 knots, Kodiak Island. Light and variable winds sit the to Castle Cape, and then east-southeast winds to the Alaska Peninsula, 15 to 20 knots. Bristol Bay, light northeast winds, 15 knots, seas 
down to three feet. On Alaska Island, east southeast 15 to 20 knots, Unmac Island southeast at 30 knots, Adak and Athka about the same, east southeast winds 30 knots, swinging around to the west behind that front to 30 knots for Amchitka Island and northwest 30 knots, Kiska to Shimia. 40 knot winds, gale warnings, Shimia to Kiska, northwest 40 knots, gales from Amchitka Island, north at 35. Small craft advisories everywhere else in the case of Adak and Athka out of the north 20 to 25 knots. On Alaska Island, east, 25 knots. Unmac Island, north to northeast, 25 to 30 knots. Seas up to 13 feet. Northern Bering Sea, Yukon Delta Coast, light variable winds at 10 knots. Pribilofs, east at 15. St. Lawrence Island and the Cuscombe Delta Coastline, north at 15. Norton Sound has the strongest winds tomorrow at 20 knots from the north with four foot seas. Northeast at 20 for Norton Sound, St. Lawrence Island, St. Matthew Island, north at 20 for the Pribilofs, otherwise the southwest coast, north to northeast. That's 15 knots with two to four foot seas. Central and Eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, east winds tomorrow, 10 knots. East of 15 for the Western Coast and then Cape Beaufort, Cape Thompson, east of 20. Cape Thompson to Wales, northeast of 15. And then we've got easterly winds 10 to 15 knots, Wales to Cape Beaufort. And the Western Arctic Coast, uh, looking at southeast winds up to 20 knots, seas building to six feet. and. Uh, East winds on average 10 to 20 knots for the uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast. And for tonight, a uh, few flurries, clouds, north slope, maybe the Arctic coast, nothing significant. Light snow continues or snow showers uh, along and north of the Alaska range there. Uh, maybe another quarter of an inch, half inch maybe, and that's about it. Otherwise, uh, mostly clear southern Alaska, south of the Alaska range into the northern panhandle. Front uh, brings chance of rain into the southern southeast coast tonight and a risk of a rain or snow shower for Kodiak Island and Perbilofs as well. And then rain and gusty winds for the uh, central Aleutians continue with that slow moving system that tomorrow really doesn't move much. Uh, front dissipates into a trough. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.